Hi everybody, welcome to my video on single period. Uh, this is a hotel room, a perishable product. It was typically called the news uh, paper problem where nobody wanted to buy a day old news. So let's take a look at it. Um, there's two main costs here. The cost of undersupply, which is basically foregone profits. You know, if you don't sell a product, you can't make profit from it. The cost of oversupply are almost your real cost here. Um, your purchasing cost, your disposable cost, minus whatever you'd get back in salvage variable. Um, then we have our, our SLP, which is the area under the curve, which is this ratio here. Um, and from that, we can find our Z value. And the real number we're trying to find is our X. How much extra product do we need to carry? All right. So with this, here's an example. Uh, the regular company making fresh bagels. Uh, their selling price is 38. They have a cost of 20. Uh, average, they make 120 batches a day, which is the reorder point, their mu, their middle, that kind of thing. Um, if they sell day-old bagels, they can make $8, and they have a standard deviation of 9 So what that means is the cost of undersupply is 18 which is the lost profit right here. Um, their cost of oversupply is just the cost minus what they recruit, recoup in day-old sales, which is uh, here. They do not add up any disposal costs, which makes their service level policy, the ratio of their CU to the CO plus CU, um, right here, 0.6. And to find that number, uh, we can go to the table. And we've seen Z tables before. So if we look at the Z table, it's somewhere in this range right here, between 5.9 and 6.0. To find it exactly, we'd set up a ratio 2.5 times 6.0, 8.8 times 5.9, and, and then si solve for the X, the old uh, inverse and multiply. But we really don't need to get that exa exact because we're working on a forecast to begin with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to equal I'm going to go back to my Z table. I'm going to go uh, the 0.2 uh, plus uh, the 0.6. All right, so that gives me the 2.6. That way I can calculate the Z. Again, from the formula up here, it's uh, uh, the Z times your standard deviation plus your mu. mu. Uh, that means 122, which gives me the idea of my safety stock, which is a little over two batches. In real life, you'd round this up or round this down, but that's how it's done right there.